Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one. It is Sunday, March the 18th, the year 2018. Let's talk trading. Weekly open and gap. Of course, before we talk trading, we talk money and risk management. Once again, risk is simply how much money or the percent of your portfolio you are willing to lose on a trade because when you enter a trade you don't know if, if you're going to win or if you're going to lose you so you have to determine ahead of time because that's the one of the things you can control is how much you lose per trade you can also control your position size very important okay here we go We've got a lot of gaps. Look at all of these gaps. A lot of these pairs gapped up. And Dollar Canadians already filled the gap. So what do we see here? We've got some movement. Let's see, we're about, oh, three hours into the uh, session here. Just about three hours. And as you can see, we've had some movement on the euro pairs, some movement on the pound pairs. New Zealand's pretty quiet. See about the usual movement on a Sunday slash Monday. Looking at the daily chart, you can see here, there's really not much to see at the time. You can see it tried to hit 131 but failed by a few pips it might try for a second push here and the buy zone just no action once again at this time of day you don't trade or this session you don't trade dollar canadian it that just doesn't make sense here we go once again early into the trading week we don't have a rat zone trade and we can look here let's shift out you can see here we can go for the pivot fade we're at 93 the pivots at 78 we can pick up a few pips trying to see if we can get that pivot fade on the daily pivot price action right now we don't really have much price action we're just getting into the day there's not really much going on. You can see here the five lines. We haven't crossed the line yet. We just about touched it, but we'll see. We can take the candle color at the line, the H1 candle color. We can see some of the pairs have broken out of the wick zone. Some of the pairs are inside wick zones here, 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 here. And we've got some that have already gone into the candle body. And here we see once again, the wick zone. And we can see the holo zone, not too much going on here. We did have put in a lower open and it popped out of it already a couple of times here, bouncing off that the daily slash weekly open today. And I just turned the computer on not too long ago. As you can see, we don't have that many ticks. We don't really have anything telling us which way to trade. And as always, we know it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. But let's go back a few. And I'm trying to remember if there were some questions out there. Um, somebody was asking, I think it had to do with the uh, trade management, the risk management, where to set the stop loss, 
what happens if you set a stop loss at 10 and you're only taking two or three pips? I get that question a lot. And I think what traders are doing is they're once again, they're trying to look for a guarantee. Trading is one of those endeavors where I, we can't guarantee the next move. We, we can't. I mean, nobody would be so foolish to risk their life or bet the farm that the next tick's going to be up or down. I mean, they're just really not that silly or that it's going to move 10 pips down before it moves 10 pips up. I mean, it would just be a crazy bet. It's just not sensible to do it. That being said, you see over 100 trades, there might be a slight edge there. And so you take the 100 trades, and hopefully at the end of those 100 trades, you'll be up rather than down. So rather than focus in, narrowing in on just that single trade, step back, zoom, you know, zoom out and, and look, at what you're, look at what you're doing. Look at the edge. Look at how many pips that you really have the potential to make when you trade one of these methods. Because see, my methods that I've put out here, they're pretty much all statistically based. I mean, the buy zone is statistically based, based on the average range, or actually the frequency distribution of the range. We know that dollar Canadian is either gonna go up here or out here or possibly both over the next over this day i mean that's something i might bet the ranch on do i really think that dollar canadians not going to have a bigger range than 20 over the day i mean it's possible i mean how often does that happen almost never so I mean, that's a pretty safe bet. And that's where the buy zone method gives you the edge. You know, the rat zone, we know at the end of the day, chances are that the tail and the upper wick, the lower wick and upper wick are probably going to be greater than 20. It's just the way it plays out. Now, I haven't run the statistics on dollar Canadian. Maybe for dollar Canadian, it's 18, maybe it's 17. Maybe it's as low as 12. But once you lock in that number, you run this, the frequency distribution, then you know where to set these zones so you know where to enter. So you have the best chance of making a profit. But once again, it's not guaranteed. You know, it might be a day or two where, you know what, it just keeps slamming new highs or slamming new lows. But see, we're not really looking for a guarantee. We're looking for an edge over a hundred trades or more. We're not just looking for that onesie twosie. So you have to stick with the method. You have to execute the method. I mean, the pivot. I mean, over the course of a year, it might miss the daily pivot a handful of times. Literally, a handful of times. I go, go look at some of my uh, pivot videos and you can see that now it might not hit it today, so you might take a short and it winds up here at the end of the day, but maybe the next day or the day after it comes back down and you collect on that trade. I mean, it's really that simple. Uh, price action. Now, this is really up to the trader how to interpret the price action, but you know, you can look and see here. You can use your own two eyes and see how many times. If you took the trade with the H1 candle color at these lines, you could have made a couple of pips, five pips or more, maybe 10 pips, like right here. There's 10 pip trade right here. There's 10 pip trade right here. There's 10 pip trade. I mean, it happens. But you also have to consider, you know, this was probably, this is during the London, New York session. Okay. And right here, we're looking at the Asian session, the, you know, so you, or actually this is the Australian, New Zealand session. So you have to be smart when you do these trades. You have to, you know, trading this pair at this time just doesn't make sense. Doesn't make pips. 
the five lines every day. We see how price cuts across these lines. I can't guarantee what's going to happen on any particular trade at any particular line, but it's either going to cross it or not. Is it going to cross it for two pips or 20 or 200? I don't know. I don't need to know. I just have to manage the trade. I have to set the trade up with the parameters that if I have my stop loss and position size adjusted right, I don't blow my account. And over time, I'm going to make it up. You're going to have hot streaks. You're going to have cold streaks. But they, those aren't really hot and cold streaks. They're just part of the normal distribution of wins and losses. And you have to let that sink in. I mean, you really have to let that sink in. I mean, you have to read books like The, Sing the Signal and The Noise, you know, where pretty much it's all noise, you know, in trading. But the point is, you have to look at it properly. Because if you do, like most traders do, and you get all flustered and you keep looking for new indicators and new systems and all that other stuff, you you're not going to have any success. You've got to pick a method, learn the method, you know, execute it flawlessly and see if it has a positive expectancy based on your results. It's just that simple. You know, the wick zone every day, I show you how price doesn't like to stay in the wick zone. It just doesn't. You know, every now and then you can see, you get a doji and you go, chances are the next day price will probably be in the wick zone. So it's like, well, I'll avoid that pair that day. Let it shake out and rather than shake me out. I mean, see, I know you guys probably, some of you might be thinking, yeah, he's right. And some people go, oh, he's full of it. But the thing is, you have to decide for yourself, figure it out for yourself. Really, just, you know, I don't care if you use my method, use somebody else's method. Do a hundred trades. In fact, next month, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use somebody else's method and try and get maybe a hundred trades in or so many trades signals we get in a month and we'll just follow it and we'll see if the system's any good or not. I mean, see, we'll take, I'll take me out of the equation. So in other words, it's not my system, not my stats, not anything me other than I just have to learn the system, execute the system the way it was presented. And let's see if it makes money or not. Why am I doing that? Just to prove how to actually learn to trade. Okay, so that's going to be the whole experiment. It's not really the system, but it's going through what a trader has to do to actually master a system and master trading. You know, once again, the holo setup. We know day after day. Price is going to come through. He's going to put in a high, fall through the highest H1 open. It's going to put in a new low, and it's going to rise above the lowest H1 open. You know, but is it five pips or is it 50? I mean, is it is it, you know, does price come all the way down here, then come all the way back? I mean, you know, touchdown, touchdown kind of trade. I can't tell you in advance. You know, um, once again, looking at the tick chart, this is just for timing entries. Um, I guess I'm going to have to do a video maybe showing that. and might even do it um, when I pop out that system next month. Um, I guess this is kind of a teaser because, see what, we got two trading weeks left this month. So you're just going to have to wait, traders. You're just going to have to wait, but hopefully it'll be worth your wait. And so just remember... It's not what you trade, so it's not the method, it's not the instrument, it's how you trade it. This is the Rumpel One signing off, and it's time to drain the banks.